Hey guys, it's Bub here, and in this video, we're taking a look at PearOS Monterey, which is the new version of the macOS clones. If you remember, about a year ago, I took a look at quite a few macOS clones, and the first one was actually PearOS 8, which was based off of Mavericks. And so now, the PearOS developers have created PearOS Monterey clone, which is obviously a clone of macOS Monterey. How close is it? I have no clue. Let's boot into the installer and check it out. All right, and here we are inside of the live environment. It did take a while to boot up, but A, we're in a VM, B, I booted it off of my network. So, of course, before we actually take a look at the OS, we're going to open the install PearOS Monterey, and it looks like this is just the standard Ubuntu installer. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed. We've seen this a million times before and I'm simply gonna get this ready to go for us. All right, and here we are in the login screen. Of course, it doesn't look as accurate as the real Mac OS, but you know what, it's close enough. Um, of course, we're not expecting things to be exactly like Mac OS, that would be extremely hard to copy, but based on that transition that we just had, this looks incredibly close and wow. Okay, so first off, the dock at the top, we have the Pear OS logo, um, it does turn white when clicked on, um, it's not, it doesn't stay transparent, but um, file, edit, finder, that all appears to do nothing. But over here we have volume, which again is different from macOS Monterey because that macOS Monterey has condensed all of this into the action center or I, whatever they want to call it. Um, then we have like our network settings. We do have search, which is in the top corner and not the center. This is just like Mavericks. Um, the control center, which for some reason brings up notifications, this is where like our typical Wi-Fi settings would be in Monterey. Then we have the time, which clicking on brings up a nice calendar. So overall, top bar, a little bit different, but it's like the Linux version, which it's, think of it as the Linux version of macOS Monterey. So it even pops up like the dock usually would. All the icons are there, even Pear OS TV, the Pear logo is there, which is pretty cool. So to the naked eye, for someone who's never really, who's not into computers as much, this would, you could trick them that this was a Mac. I guarantee it. Um, first off, the Finder, which is called Files, opens up the Files application, which has the macOS themed folders. And overall, this just looks a lot like Mac. This looks so much like macOS. Um, the windows do move around like they wiggle like that when you move them. Um, pretty interesting, I would say. Font is a little bit different, but I actually like this font a lot more than the one found in macOS. The launch pad doesn't look as accurate, but of course, we still have all of our apps pre-installed. We get Arc, Calendar, Cheese, which is themed like FaceTime, which it's not FaceTime. We have Contact, Print, Contact, Theme, Document Viewer, Emoji Selector, Files, Firefox, Gambas, no clue what that is, Gpotter, which is Podcasts, Photos, Info Center, Input Method, the K Address Book, Kate, KCalc, KMail Header, Keynotes, Console, some kind of manager, I'll look at that later. Mail, Maps, the Pear Store, Pear TV, PEX, Integrated Development, PIM Data Exporter, PIRI, PIRI, P Message, P Tunes, Software and Update, Software Update, Spectacle, System Settings, Theme Switcher. And then on the second page, because there is a second page, we have To Do, USB Utility, VLC, and the Web. Um, so in the taskbar, or not the taskbar, the dock, we do have. Safari, which is which is actually this app right here, and it's very much minimalist like Safari is. Um, again, could easily fool someone. P message looks like it uses empathy, um, so it's not like an iMessage clone. It doesn't have its own service. Mail, this is just probably a reskin. Oh, yeah, K Mail um, doesn't look anything like Apple Mail, but that's okay. Maps, I'm actually curious to see what kind of maps. Okay, it looks like they have map box. Gwenview, this is in basically every macOS clone Linux distro. So I think it's glitching out right now. Okay, because something crashed and then it just glitched out. I'm not really sure what that was. Next up is Cheese, which like I said is not FaceTime, but it is just like your camera viewer. Little misleading, but I really don't know what else you would put for FaceTime. Maybe Zoom? Um, calendar, pretty standard calendar, I would say. K address book, I feel like no one actually uses that. The to-do list. So most of this is just like open source applications. 
K notes doesn't appear to do anything. Uh, Pair TV doesn't appear to do anything on the dock. P tunes doesn't. Uh, P tunes glitched something out. Something closed unexpectedly. P tunes is just rhythm box. Um, G Potter, I think. Okay, yes, this is a real podcast application. The Pear Store, I think we've already established this from the Pear OS, the last version. I forget what that was. Um, this is just like a reskin of another store. It's not the Ubuntu store, but it is some. Um, I forget what it's called. And then System Settings, which I'd be interested to see. Okay, again, glitched everything out again. Okay, so this does look pretty similar to the real Mac OS Monterey um, settings. Again, Mac OS Monterey. Um, Looks like it's based off KDE, and yeah, everything looks pretty great here. So, in my last Mac OS clone videos, I got yelled at for judging the performance off of a virtual machine. So I'm not being going to be judging performance, I'm going to be judging more or less how it looks compared to Monterey. Um, overall, I would say that it looks pretty close. Can't judge performance because we're running it on a VM. There are some glitches that are in here that are not performance related, but overall, I mean, downloads pops up like that. And like that transparency thing, you click on something and the transparency just goes away. So overall, I really would use this. I'm actually interested, what are the desktop? So if I really wanted to use Mac OS, because there was a time before I had a Mac that I was really into Mac OS and I really didn't have the ability to get a Mac and I could not get Hackintoshing to work to save my life, I would have loved this because this is so similar to Mac OS and it gives your typical person that hasn't had any interaction with Mac OS a taste into that Mac environment. But you're also not limited to Apple's factors. Like using this Linux clone, you're not tied into an Apple ID, you're not tied into any of that, which is also a downside of having a Hackintosh. Using this over Hackintosh also gives you the ability like, hey, I don't have to worry about kecks or any of that weird Hackintosh stuff that is really crazy and really annoying. Um, so overall, would I use it? Um, yeah, I think I would. There's some glitches, but it's way better than any macOS clone I've tried before. It's more up to date. It matches the new features. And overall, like I said, someone who's never used mac os this is the closest thing that they could get i think if anyone else has another mac os that distribution that they'd like me to take a look at definitely leave it in the comments below because i'd be interested to find out what you guys what's actually out there i've looked at a few but i haven't looked at a ton so let me know down below with that being said if you like this video make sure to like it and subscribe if you're new around here as i do all kinds of different technology videos including device restorations that being said i'll see you all in the next one